Today we're talking about how to play Steam VR games wirelessly on your Oculus Quest 2. So let's go ahead and get right into it. <laughs> So being able to get Steam VR wirelessly on your Oculus Quest 2 are some cool features as they are deeming it to be fully wireless and therefore we're happy to just have uh, share this with you an easy way and just make it go as soon as possible, as quick as possible so we can help you out in understanding just the fact that we can just get this rolling. You don't need that link. Wirelessly on your Quest 2 is an incredible feature so we're going to go ahead and talk right about it and I just want to say thank y'all so much for over 200,000 followers on TikTok. It really does mean the world as we're helping out in bite-sized formats people with their quest to and tech gaming reviews and more so if you're interested in longer form content like that you can join us here as we're gonna try to get a hundred thousand subscribers and it really will mean the world if you can help us out on that journey we're we'll doing it through AirLink and virtual desktop today very easy way to be able to get wirelessly going and therefore breaking it down is gonna be fun let's go ahead and get some basic info out the way so just ensure that your pc is vr ready ensure that you do have some capabilities and being able to run this type of softwares rather you're trying to stream or just play games in general just you do need respectable formats make sure that wi-fi is at five gigahertz and also ensure that you have that ethernet plugged in hardwired as the more you can get hardwired into situations, it really does help with getting this with lagging components and just really glitching and just not having a great experience, especially with Airlink being a little bit more new rather than virtual desktop being for the OGs. Uh, it, it really does make a massive difference. Virtual desktop was far more optimized while Airlink had barely get, got into beta with the V28 update, but V29, V30 are trying to really up up the tempo with Airlink. So the two options are gonna be the Airlink virtual desktop. Let's talk about Air Link right now. I have everything noted down so I can make sure I'm going through things. So with Air Link, the Quest is affordable, it's free, and it's easy for that. So the, the main thing, the main option, the main vision for the Quest 2 is to make everything affordable. So with Air Link, it's free, and that's a great thing. Like what I said, it was in beta form not too long ago. So let's there's gonna be some kinks you might have to work, but all in all, there's just it's a straight to the point settings, kind of like how Oculus casting is, but it is the version to actually get VR games going. So Air Link, you need to make sure that your, your Oculus is updated V28 or higher. Now next you're gonna have to do is get the air link option enabled in the desktop if you get the desktop app make sure you get the desktop app or you can go to oculus.com slash have everything going through whether you're google searching it anything just ensure that you're ready to go through your desktop you're enabling it first through your desktop when you enable it through your desktop it's to be completely installed completely running so always uh take a look around take a mini tour make sure everything's good you don't want to get i don't know you don't, you don't want to get an offset one you don't want to get something that's not right so ensure that's updated your pc's updated everything's just updated at the groundwork have the oculus desktop app go to setup make sure it's enabled the airlink option oh so now you're gonna go through your headset on airlink so your headset on airlink is gonna just make sure that this is updated like what i said earlier then you want to be able to go to the settings features and on your so different variations on the updates with this right so if you have a v28 still if you haven't updated it um there's gonna be they're gonna be located differently but all in all you're gonna go to your settings features you're just gonna enable airlink it should be right in the settings option it'll be floating around in different perspectives if you have v28 v29 or v30 either way it is a complete set up in here so you just put on your vr headset after you have everything enabled on the pc desktop or the desktop app and then you're also going to go into here put it on turn on the air link enable it so you can allow for some pairing to start happening After that you're going to go ahead and download the steam vr app have the steam vr on your desktop also customizing the settings as soon as you get it there's not a whole lot of settings but you can customize the settings which is always good so customize it it should be located on the bottom left for the most part like what i said depending on what updates you have so just relax and figure out which one you have it should be on there bottom left bottom right different toggle menus um so ensure that you're customizing that to the pairing section so to get into the pairing section of the vr headset your quest 2 and the desktop app have everything on on the desktop app like we talked about earlier have the software have it down uh, slash setup have everything going enabled real easy get into this have the the vr um have the air link enabled in here then have your steam vr then after that you're gonna pair it to your computer and it should just open up automatically and that's an easy pair and just like that you're gonna have your full desktop version really looking at you then you can open up steam vr after that now you want to ensure that you just have steam vr in general just because it's an easier way to optimize and get into it and so to get your full pc view easy you just pair them have everything enabled and just like that you have that on airlink that's airlink version 
So let's go ahead and talk about the virtual desktop version. So the virtual the virtual desktop version. So here's one downfall about the virtual desktop version. The air link is all completely free. Virtual desktop is $20. You're going to have to get that from the quest store for $20 and also make sure that you have the streamer virtual desktop app on your PC. You would go to a VR desktop dot net so vrdesktop.net in order to get the desktop app so that you can have that on your pc ready to go again like what i said just disclaimers ensure that your pc is really much vr ready and have some great wi-fi 5 gigahertz and also it's hardware because vr has been far more optimized for the og users for everyone that's really been advanced in vr and know their complications because there's much more thorough manual setups and so if you are looking at the v uh, the virtual desktop route, I feel in my opinion, which is a lot better, but it does cost money and it costs for a lot more manual labor, meaning that you have to look more in depth from performance issues and more. So ensure that you're uh, to start off the foundation, make sure your PC is VR ready and have it Ethernet. I can't stress that enough because people have massive issues because they think that they got an affordable headset and that they don't really need to get uh, a much more expensive PC. But with uh, virtual desktop, you are going to need that. Next for virtual desktop, after you go to VRDesktop.net. You're going to have to go to customize the settings. Like what I said, there's so much more from the rates and everything, depending on what you want. We don't need to go more in depth than that, but that's based on your flavor. Toggle with it. See what you like more. Do some examples, some screen recording examples. See what you like most. I usually set them on default, try it out for a while, and then I tend to customize them. There's not one way fits all. Everybody has different GPUs and CPUs, so figure out what you like most. After that, you're going to connect your Oculus username. You're going to keep the app open on the desktop just so it can recognize it a lot faster, and, and then it helps pay that option then after that your computer is going to pop up into your app as you have it in here make sure you have virtual desktop in here it's a 20 dollars one so while you're in here you have to keep that app open on the pc this helps it pair you just connect it your computer pops up just literally go around with your controllers you use your use your controllers to move around and everything and that's going to help you out with really recognizing what to do in the v uh the virtual desktop app it's like airlink the pc format pops right out in the headset so all in all, the foundational things of these two to be able to connect them. So AirLink for one is just to have AirLink enabled. AirLink is an Oculus Quest thing, so it's easier. It's more of an in-house. It's it's not an external option, so it's easier. All you do is like enable settings, and you have some basic performance that you want to probably customize. And after that, you just enable it on PC, enable it on your headset, and it usually is seamless to get that going. Now with virtual desktop. Virtual desktop is a little bit more of an external, advanced. It's been used through OG VR users and far more complex VR users that want much more manual control. Now, these are much more harder. And like what I said earlier, AirLink, it was in beta for a long time before it actually has switched over. Well, I wouldn't say a long time, but V28, V29, until it's really trying to maximize its potential now. So it's still very new. While virtual desktop has been around, has been optimized by the devs. And now, so with virtual desktop, you'll do the same thing. You get to pay the $20, download the app. After that, you are able to pair your headset, get it in here, get it on the desktop app. And then you pair them, it recognizes your computer. And just like that's a simple setting. And um, after that, you're really much connected in through your headset, each other route. When it comes down to both of these, it's your option. And there is kind of a third option if you want to use ALVR, but it's just you still need a link per se kind of like side quests is those two options are just really weird side quests and alvr because you have to have the actual link to plug in and then you can start to decide to do it wireless after so that doesn't really make sense this is more of just a wireless upfront uh tutorial so with uh airlink and virtual desktop it's up to you virtual desktop is far better because it's just much more optimized and and brushed up versus airlink still kind of being in beta or the end of its beta form so Depending on what you want, if you want to spend the $20, you want a better experience, of course, it's virtual desktop. And for just much more complicated VR users, especially if you spend tons of equipment on a headset and on PC, then you definitely want the top-notch stuff. But if you bought a Quest 2 and you kind of have a pretty good, uh, a respectable PC that works and you just don't want to spend any more extra money and you'd rather just do some in-house stuff anyway, kind of like myself, I use all the in-house Quest stuff, Oculus Casting, Side Quest, AirLink, etc., um, it's easier. You just enable everything. So it's, it's all up on your flavor and what you decide most. But other than that, I appreciate you all so much. If y'all like content like this, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Very easy, very to the point. Now, if y'all want more tutorials, more tech reviews, much more, I, just anything, let us know what's up as we're getting on the road to 100K subscribers on YouTube. And also, thank you so much for 200K plus on TikTok. Join the community. Let us know. All description, description box below. I appreciate y'all. Peace.